That's what they're laughing at. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Prophetic Update Updates from the Gate. From the Gate. I have to remember our own title, the Prophetic Update from the Gate. Good Wednesday evening to everybody. I know, uh, as many will be watching the uh, their home church services. So at least I hope our Shabbaters uh, sign on with us uh, tonight. Maybe others can watch it on the weekend. Hello, Garland. And probably Good Sherry. Good to have you all. Sherry, and Sherry there too. Good to have you guys uh, with us as well. And if you sign on, uh, please again uh, hit a, hit a like, uh, make a comment. Uh, do the little hearty things or whatever, do something because seen the hearty things. all of those things, when you do those, uh, Facebook uses those to increase our audience size. The more likes and responses we get, the more our audience size can increase or they get it out to more people. Uh, so to expand this ministry, uh, it's going to take many of boost. you, you know, to boost it, yeah, boost, yeah, to boost this ministry's uh, outreach. It's going to take you guys uh, responding back. When you come on, there's a lot of people that watch compared to who responds. <laughs> so, and, and I'm really guilty. I'm very guilty. A lot of times I watch what I like, and uh, and I don't usually hit like, or I don't always hit uh, make a comment. Rarely do I make a comment. Occasionally I hit a like. And so I'm trying to, uh, as I learn these things, hey, Sharon, uh, to be a doer of those words and not just a hearer of those words. So uh, anyway. So uh, I just encourage you, even if hey, you don't, Sharon. even if you don't like to do that as well, like if you're like me and you don't want to do that, uh, it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't bring anything back on you. Uh, just simply hit it. It helps us out if you do that to uh, to get into a better place. Linda. Uh, hello, Miss Linda. But we're glad to have you all here today. These are the and Margaret and Margaret and Tommy. Good to have you all on tonight. I do have a, an announcement to make. Uh, that you make note of this. If you have friends who prefer to watch YouTube, who don't like Facebook and, and don't watch because of Facebook, <coughs> but you've talked to them and and uh, we are now, we do ha now have a YouTube page. It's of course Destiny's, with an apostrophe, Destiny's Gate. And uh, we I uploaded one, uh, the uh, Shabbat, this past Shabbat service up onto the YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel now. Uh, you can go to it and subscribe. And so I'm going to start loading. I've now figured out how to download these off Facebook Live and then upload them into uh, YouTube. Um, we're not going live on YouTube yet, but these are services you've probably already seen. Uh, unless I start doing some teaching straight to YouTube instead of doing them live, I may do that, even put some stuff up. But if you want to know, uh, when something new is up on there, and that may be for some of your friends or relatives or people you know that just don't follow on Facebook, uh, but they do watch stuff on YouTube. So Destiny's Gate on YouTube. Make sure you got to put the apostrophes in there because yeah, make sure you got to put the apostrophes in. It has the little gate symbol. You'll see that emblem up on it. That'll be the emblem on it. Okay. This is my new cup, my new favorite cup. Yeah, her new favorite cup. Came she, from Sid's Creation. She's on Facebook. Yeah, Sid's Creation's on Facebook. Uh, so uh, anyway, so you might want to go there if you like those kind of cups like my wife does. And you know, she, now she has that pattern if you want to go in there and get one of them. Uh, but anyway, uh, you'll see that that uh, the little gate emblem, the Destiny's Gate and the emblem will be up on our YouTube which, page. Which our... Um, Son-in-law is responsible for. He did that for us, and it's on our sign down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, let, let me, before you get any farther, let me just say, maybe you didn't see it, I don't know, uh, but we did uh, take Ashley. She went in the ambulance yesterday to the primary doctor. He bought a bank and mm -hmm. made it into his offices. And so he's got the drive through in the back, and it just worked out really, really good. So we went through the drive through We went through the drive. <laughs> the ambulance did, and the doctor came out, and uh, he um, went into the ambulance and his to, to check her. And they, you know, uh, they were having a hard time getting blood, and the doctor s looked at me and said, pray we can get blood. And so that didn't take me that long. <laughs> and so I started praying uh, to 
And then I started singing, I plead, I plead the blood. I did that in the hospital and they were able to get it. So they took her a lot of blood. Yeah. They got a lot of blood. So they're going to yeah. check her just to keep up, you know, keep us aware right. of anything going on. Because we still cannot take her to the wound care center. They said, uh, call her back, call them back when they ever, uh, we ever, she didn't ever go over a hundred. And it's like, huh? Ah. <laughs> she can do that because the doctors think that may be neurological. So anyway, yeah, it's up to a week now. Yeah, it has to be a week without any fevers over a hundred. So we trust. Can't remember our, many of those in her life. But we trust our doctor, and I thanked him. He is a very strong Christian, and he's a godsend to us. So um, just be praying for him as well, uh, that God give him, um, that God give him wisdom. Because he's been treating her for nine and a half years, and has he listens to us, and so we're very thankful for Good that. Deal. Good deal. Hi, Dad, Ron. Ron, hey, Ron. Welcome to to the live broadcast here from Destiny's Gate. Uh, but we are uh, Jeff and Angie Docker for new people's coming on, pastors of Destiny's Gate. It's a Messianic fellowship, and when you go on the YouTube, uh, the the instead of funny faces of us. You know that 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 Facebook pulls out itself. Why the uh, the videos on YouTube will have the sign from Destiny's Gate on it. So you have to look at the name of it to know what it is instead of which just which has Ashley's name on. Which has Ashley's name on it. Which I'm going to check her. I think she may have just woke up as one of the as one of the pastors. I think most of you have heard the story, but the Lord she was very upset over this this change and this move, and uh, the Lord told me to make her a pastor. And she hasn't got to go down there yet, but I'm going to go ahead and and uh, while he's checking her, she all right? Yes. While he's she's he's checking her, my shirt you can't see it all, but it says never give up, and that is that is something the Lord has instilled in me for a long time, and so the other day, the Lord gave me. Um, it's something he had given me a long time ago about when David said, um, well, let me just read it. First Samuel 30 and 3. So David and his men came to the city and there it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept. We tell you something. It's okay to cry. Even the men, mm -hmm. it's okay to cry because that is a re release. And you can't keep things inside of yourself all the time. Because if you do, it can affect your body. Affect your health. And affect your health. So you can't keep it. If you want to go into a closet and just cry out to him, you need to release whatever that is that's, that's holding you down. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Filled with despair, David's own men were about to kill him. <coughs> I don't, I've, been, I've come really close to that. <laughs> the nine words I'm going to show you were the greatest psalm David ever spoke. In this accidental psalm, David glorified God like he had never glorified God before. Here are the words. Shall I pursue this truth? Shall I overtake them? Don't let their simplicity fool you. David glorified God in what he did not say as much as what he did, what, did say. Even though he felt rage and grief, he did not insult God's character. He did not rail against his circumstances. David did not sin with his mouth. There was no, why did you let this happen to me? Or, how can I trust you when you can't even protect my family? David was practicing what he preached. And some of us need to do that. Because we're all, when it boils down to it, we're all ministers. And some of us need to practice what you preach. Because I know you preach to people. I know you do. If not to their face. Sometimes you might do it on face of the book. Reach behind her back a little. Yeah. All right. He practiced what he preached in Psalm 19 and 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. 
the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. David did not torture himself by dwelling on why it had gotten so bad. Come on now. He knew the goodness, mercy, and wisdom of God. He didn't even ask for comfort. No, he knew he needed to ask for something else. Can you guess what that is? He needed direction. And that, my friend, is what we need the most. God answered David and gave him a promise. Pursue. For you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. And that's what the Lord told me when I was praying for Ashley the other day. Because you know what? Sometimes the easy way is like, okay, you know, just let her go. Or we can just deal with or this as it is. we can just, you know, whichever way. But it's like, nope, I will not bow to that. I will not give up. I will not give in. I will fight and I will win. And the word says, and I shall recover all. Well, one of the things that we have had to watch over these many years as we've been dealing with our situation, as we said before, some of y'all who've been, uh, especially husbands and wives who've been thrown together for the last uh, few weeks now, and you're already just really having an issue with each other. We've been doing this for 28 years, you know, <laughs> 24 hours a day practically, and just get in a way when things were necessary not to go, you know, not for fun most of the time, but just mostly when it was necessary. Uh, and, and everything's not always peaches and cream and everything's not always rosy, but, uh, but you work your way through those things. Uh, but the deal is this, you have to be careful and don't just get settled where you are. Accept it, don't accept it as the new normal of the way this is going to be. And, and God's had to shake us a few times over the years because it's easy to learn how to deal with Ashley's, if the Ashley's condition changes and it stays that way for a while, it's easy to get adjusted to the condition. And when, when things happen, it's easy to get adjusted. Once you get once you deal with the change, which we don't like to do, but once you deal with the change, it's easy to get adjusted to the change to where it becomes the new normal uh, that we're not supposed to stay in. I believe there's going to be a new normal when we come out of this, but it's going to be a better normal, not a worse normal. Okay, uh, And so you have to be God's had to shake us and say, hey, you've stopped fighting. You've, you've stopped fighting against this and you're just you're just dealing with it. You're just coping with it. You're managing it. And we, we weren't called to manage the devil. Nowhere in the scriptures that says manage the devil and he will flee from you or manage the devil and you'll make it or you'll be okay or he'll leave you alone. No, you have to resist. To take authority. You have to fight back and you have to resist. All right, let's, let's get into tonight. Again, we're glad all of you are here uh, with us uh, to do this. We are trying to limit these updates to one hour, but uh, you have to keep praying for us to get that to happen. Any okay? We're working on it. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your grace to us. We thank you for an opportunity to connect together as the body of Christ. <laughs> Speak to us tonight, God. If there's any of our body, any, any of our the body of Christ that's a part of the connection here to this ministry and to what we do that is in difficulty, that is sick, that is suffering, God, I pray that you would minister to them, that you would touch them, Father God, give them peace in their mind, peace in their heart, and peace in their home, Father God. Let your spirit be with all of us, and may we become more like you through this process, yes. through this refining process. Uh, uh, I pray that you'd make us more like you. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. And amen. All right, the purpose of these particular um, nightly these these three night events through the week is to talk about what's going on uh, to deal with where we are and what is happening uh, to speak to events and we felt that it was necessary at this time to begin uh, some prophetic updates uh, to kind of answer some questions of why and where and what and how long and not that we're prophetic uh, we're not prophetic experts we are not prophecy preachers. We have been doing prophecy preaching specifically like some ministers have for the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, like my friends, my friends, Darren, who pastors Church of the Cove, he says, you know, we all got a lane to run in and we're all running in our lane. Uh, so our lanes are different, but we're running in the same direction. And so uh, prophecy, as far as just straight prophecy preaching is not the lane we run in. 
Uh, but we have learned uh, over the years to research, to search, and to compare and to look. And so we want to talk to you about in this about some things uh, of how to see these things and see them in perspective of what the word says. And if you didn't know yet, um, the Tennessee governor, um, Bill Lee, has extended the statewide stay at home order until April the 30th. I think it was for midnight on the 14th or 15th or something like that. But it has been extended until April the 30th. So you get more of us. Yay! <laughs> more of us. Still here on April the 30th. Of course, you know, up in uh, Michigan where the rowdy people are, you know, they've been protesting and they've been having a drive by protest in their cars today. Uh, so all those Michigan folks that, you know, that may be a little on the rowdy side uh, that's been participating in that. Uh, each state's been doing a little bit differently. So uh, some of you, I know where you're where you're calling from. Some of you are around here or watching from you around here. Some of you are actually in Michigan. Uh, and I did that on purpose to, to, to let you know I've been watching. We've been watching the state. Uh, but anyway, so seeing what's going on, a lot of things are happening. One more thing before he gets going. Um, also, he did say, the governor, that um, schools are to remain closed through the rest of the school year. Please be praying for the kids. And the please parents. be praying for the parents. <laughs> and the um, teachers and, and yeah, the principals. You know, my, my um, sister is um, well i think she's an it's assistant principal, principal, principal now but she did teach and she you know really loves her school and so it it's it's hard it's hard on all of them but uh, please be in prayer for them uh it, you know especially the ones that should have been graduating this year yeah. i mean that's a very special moment of your life we graduated together mm -hmm. um we were on the stage together with um the for the um whatever you call it, Bacula. ceremony, Ceremon whatever yeah. you want to call yeah. it. Anyway, we were yeah, actually, uh, you do the, I, I did the opening prayer mm -hmm. and she did the closing prayer. You know, this was before we ever thought we, we weren't going into ministry at the no, time, but they had, I double -dog they, they had us doing the praying even in high school. And the, uh, local Methodist pastor was preaching our back at uh, up at Bethel Baptist church, a local Methodist preacher. We were at Bethel Baptist church here in Townsend. Some of you there from Bethel or know of Bethel. And the Methodist preacher, Pastor Wilson, uh, was doing the backyard art service. And Angie and I was sitting there and he said, one of the things I'll miss about this senior class is seeing Jeff zoom by my house at about 15, 20 after eight. School started at 830, picking up Angie and zooming back by, trying to get them, trying to get both of them to school on time, you know. And he said, but we all know what kind of plans they already have. And Angie's mama went, huh, like that really loud everybody heard it and everybody laughs so, anyway. so god's had us in his hands for a while you know we've been how long we've been married for 45 years this year this this no. should be no last year. last year last year was 45 years we've known each other for 47 yeah we've been we've been seeing each other for 47 years got married uh, at 18 started dating at 16 got married at 18 started having sure kids at 20 in for all of that yeah and so uh, God's had us in his hands, putting this together for a long time. So that's why we, we can deal with each other uh, through all this. And hopefully God gives you the grace to do whatever it is you need to do. All right. Prophetic events. Uh, I wanted to talk about something uh, tonight that is not always included. What, what happens a lot of times is we see an event like this pandemic <coughs> take place. And immediately we focus on the event and everybody begins to search and talk about is this a last day's event? What does this event mean? And they'll, they'll look in and they'll see, oh, there's supposed to be pestilence, which is, uh, you know, pandemics. It's diseases come from animals. Or so oh, the Bible talks about these. We must be, some say, oh, we must be in Revelation. Some say, oh, we're, no, we're in the last days. And, and some go, I don't mean anything at all. Uh, the issue is this. You have to look at more than just an event when you're trying to determine the time frame that we are in. You can't just focus on an event itself uh, because, and we're going to go to Matthew chapter 24, very familiar scriptures tonight. Uh, but as you're getting ready to turn, I'll talk about these things. You, you look for some more things and these are not all the things, uh, but, but you know, besides looking for the biblical signs, besides searching your Bible and saying, oh, is this a biblical event? Is this in our Bible somewhere? Uh, so you do, you look at the event itself and you search it up and say, okay, is there scriptural reference to this type of event? Then you got to look at the timing of that event. When is it happening and, and where is it happening? To what degree is it happening? 
uh, you have to look up the frequency and the intensity of the events because one of the signs is earthquakes. We've always had earthquakes, always back in the Bible. There was an earthquake, you know, in the time of Isaiah and, and Uzziah. There was an earthquake back in Isaiah's time. Uh, that was a that was a notable earthquake, and there was an earthquake during the crucifixion. Ground shook. There was an earthquake. Uh, so there's always been earthquakes, but you have to look at the frequency and the intensity. Uh, how often these things happen, which is increasing, you know, increasing. Uh, but one of the things that is not always considered when you look at these events is the hearts of the people, the hearts of the people. What are the people who are on the earth like? What is the uh, what is the heart of man like in that day and time? Mm. Because that's also a part, a big part of the signs of the times that we are in. Right. Uh, how men's hearts are, what kind of lifestyle we we live, and how they respond to the things of God is a big part of the events. Well, let me say this while you're on that. Um, got the governor, Cuomo, of New York. He actually got on and said, uh, our behavior has stopped the spread of the virus. God did not spread stop the spread of the virus god did not do that so he said hey we we're the ones that stopped the virus by all this by, by how we behave god had nothing to do with there it. were some that boasted mm. in the word oh yeah and uh, i wish he would go in and see how that worked out for him <laughs> yeah that's that that statement if, you, if he doesn't repent of it is not going to be a good statement for him uh to rely on uh, so when you begin to look at these things, you have to pull in uh, prophetic uh, signs and events together and begin to compare the things that this word says with the events that's taking place and, and try to discern then uh, whether or not you really consider this a last day's event. Now, I happen to believe very strongly that we are in the last days. I believe that we are in the end of the last days, okay? Prophetically speaking, I don't have a time to uh, to approach all of that, but I'll just say this is from my stance, so you know where I'm coming from. Yes, I believe that we are in the end of the last days. Now, how long that, that end is, how many years or how many, how many days, weeks, months, or years that is, I cannot say, but I know we are in the final days uh, leading up to the coming of the Lord, the return you, of the you Lord. Have to, you have to recognize that. The Lord said that we should know we should know the signs. Know the signs. But I, I, I preached a long time ago that the enemy does not know the exact time. Nobody knows the exact time, as Yeshua said yeah. in the Word. Nobody knows but the Father. Right. And so the enemy will try in seasons... He will try and he will come out and and God allows it for his own purpose, okay? He doesn't cause it. We've got to make that distinction. But God allows it. Sometimes it may be for a warning. Sometimes it may be for, you know, a different reason. Uh -huh. But God, because nothing happens without okay. God allowing, okay. if you go back to Job. Right. But what I want to say is, that the enemy comes in at different times. Look at Hitler. Uh, you know, he didn't he didn't know that if it was time or not, but he will come in and try to do some things to see if the timing is right. There are many historical figures that could have become an Antichrist type leader if it had been time. So you have to understand the, the timing. Now, timing goes back to, uh, uh, you can keep your thumb in, in, in Matthew 24, but timing goes back to Genesis chapter 1. Okay, uh, so we're talking about some of the things that you have to, to look at and perceive the time frame that we are in. Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 and 15 says, And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. You know, you have, you have the, the, the lights, the moon and the sun and the stars to separate the day from the night, the light day from the night. And let them be for signs. And for seasons, that word seasons is mohadim, not means doesn't mean summer, spring, and fall. It means mohadim. It means appointed times. Let them be for signs, for appointed times, and for days, and for years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So in the very beginning, 
God set signs in the stars and the heavens. Now, we've talked about this, but I like to mention things more than once. You cannot govern your life by the stars. If you're reading, if you're, if you read on your sign, the horoscope on your sign, cut it out. That's witchcraft. God forbids it. Uh, our lives are not to be directed by the stars, the sun and the moon and the stars. We don't make decisions based on what the sun, the moon, and the stars do. Not, not, like, no. not like that personally. Yeah. You don't make a decision. That, yeah. Oh, I can't go out today because my horoscope says this is a bad day for me or so and so is going to happen. No, you do not guide your life by the stars. But they were put in the sky to, to understand prophetic times and seasons. God put them up there as a clock. We know now, because we have computers, we know that they are very accurate, okay? Uh, they can be predicted down to minutes and seconds. You know, there's an atomic clock uh, that you can go on to that basically is supposed to be right on and every other clock set like that. So uh, the people that God created on the earth, he didn't create them all with a watch on their arm. He gave, he gave them an understanding of the sun, the moon, and the stars as God's timepieces for the events that would come later. Let me go back to the horoscope for just one second. Okay. You can get into that because I'm going to tell you that it's part of a mind control. Mm -hmm. it, and it I'm going to tell you this. You don't even mind. have to go to a psychic. I call it, that's what I call a psychic. You don't even have to go to, to that. You can go to some churches. Oh, did you just say that? Oh, yes, she I said did. that. She said that. Yes, I did. You can have mind control even in some churches. Right, because... And you can start to believe it. Right. And you know what? When you start to believe it and you start saying it and speaking it and decreeing it over yourself, you are putting a word curse over your own right. self. And when, when any minister, any minister, any denomination, anywhere, when those ministers... <laughs> Do you like that, Chris? Begin to manipulate. They try to manipulate you. Pa pastors, be very careful because when you use manipulation, when you when you when when you use manipulation to try to get the response that you want, when you use manipulation to try to get a, a bigger offering, when you use manipulation to try to get people to respond, when you purposely try to to tug on the heartstrings of your people to get a particular response out of them, uh, instead of trusting the Holy Spirit right. to touch them, then you're operating in the realms of witchcraft, which is manipulation, rather than trusting how, the Holy Spirit to do right. Uh, the work that needs to be done. Right. And so there are things that we've allowed in the church or we've done in the church. And, and so we have to be very careful in these things. And I'll give you a little pet peeve. I didn't mean to get off on this money trail, right. but since no, we're here, no. we're going to stay here just Good a fact. moment, okay, is because of this. I, especially on Facebook, some of you all have sent these out, so be very careful with this. We send out a chain letter on Facebook. We say you need to do this, 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 and the blessing is going to come your way. Or the honey, that is simply witchcraft. witchcraft disguised by a Christian face on it. No, you can I, I will Ooh. not be blessed or cursed whether or not I repeat your or I, I copy and paste or repeat your post that you sent to me, because some of you sent it directly to me because you know I'm a pastor. Oh, do this and this and this and send it on and you'll be blessed. And, and no, a chain letter is witchcraft. Okay, Man. it's manipulation. Doesn't matter if it's got a scripture in it. Doesn't matter what it's how, The devil can quote scripture, folks. He knows the Bible better than you know the Bible. So be careful what you get yourself into. Amen. Okay, be careful with these things. So the sun and the moon and the stars we're set there to be signs that God would use in his prophetic clock so that we would know when things are going to happen. And whether you realize it or not, we just came through the feast and, and, and they're, they're set by the clock of God's timepiece. OK, they, they are set certain times and you can even go back before there was uh, instructions in the Torah uh, back to the time of Noah and some of the others. And you will find that they were operating according to God's time clock. Uh, of these events even before they were described in Moses' writings in the Torah of what they were for, okay? Uh, the, 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 the flood came and ended on feast cycles, all right? Abraham, when the Lord appeared unto Abraham, what did he bring Abraham when he said he brought him some 
unleavened bread because he showed up in the time of unleavened bread. Abraham brought him unleavened bread. Yeah, they say, well, it's because it was quick. But let me tell you, I don't know about you, but I don't keep unleavened bread in my house unless it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Why? Because it don't have much taste to it. Now, you can make it a little tasty. I, you know, I'm not the best cook in the world. But usually when you bake bread, because all other scriptural bread, bread that's baked is baked with leaven in it. All right? So you go, go down through there and see a lot of these events all happened and will happen on God's time clock, which is governed by the stars and the sun and the moon. Why? Uh, just because because right now, even in the Jewish community, they debate over the calendar, over the Hebraic calendar, okay? We've had two different calendars in, in uh, you know, we, in, in Western society. We've had two different calendars uh, since the time of Christ, all right? Uh, that, that's been that's had to be adjusted to and dealt with. And then you've got a, one calendar set up by the Muslim faith, and you've got a Chinese calendar, and you've got Aztec calendars that they've had. And, you and you know, like I said, you've got a, two, different, two or three different kind of Jewish calendars. Everybody wants to decide for themselves but God works on his time schedule on his calendar. Amen. And so they were set there for time for seasons for us to understand prophetically the times that we are in. And, and so we know uh, you have to be ready for the return of the Lord or to go to meet the Lord passing by way by, by, by the way that all men pass by as a point that the man wants to die. And after this, the judgment, you have to be ready any time for that. But you also can know that God works prophetically in certain seasons. Right. He, he, you know, he, he, he gave his life on Passover. He laid in the grave on unleavened bread. He rose from the dead on the third day, and then first fruits, as I say, became the first fruits of them that slept. I know, I get it, I'm, I'm talking with my hands. She's trying to hold them down here so I don't block y'all off. Not used to a camera still. All right. So we see those things. I believe that the, the Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost. Uh, which is a remembrance of of the law coming down which, on Mount Sinai, which started the last days. Oh, yeah. and, and 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 Joel said, and Peter got up on the day of Pentecost and said, "This is what Joel talked about." What did Joel talk about? Oh, I've got it right here. <laughs> Joel said in Joel chapter two, verses thirty and thirty-two, "I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun will turn into darkness and the moon to blood before." the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And then it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. Um, he said blood and moon, blood and, and fire and vapor of smoke. We talked about the blood moons. People went, oh, the blood moons take place, and they started looking immediately for the Lord to come. Well, there's a key word there. It said these things would happen. And you know what was different about the four blood moons? Four of them. Two year, for two years, there was two blood moons each year that happened on a feast day. Those as things, a sign. As a sign. Because those, that, that will not happen again for another hundred years. That they, that, that, those Lord, moons I hope we go. fall on a feast day. And this, this, this society does not have another hundred years left. And anything I can see prophetically, why? Because this, the generation that saw Israel become a nation again will not pass away till all things are fulfilled. So, so there can't be another hundred years left. Okay? Because a generation can't live that much longer uh, in today's time. We don't live 900 years anymore. So that don't happen. So... Joel prophesied that before the second coming of the Lord, before Messiah comes and returns and sets up his kingdom, that great and awesome day of the Lord, that great and terrible day, it says in King James, it talks about the day of the Lord's return, that that can't happen. When that happens, before that happens, there'll be signs in the heavens. So uh, that means we'll start seeing unusual things happen in the sky around we us, have. the atmosphere. There's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be tsunamis. There's going to be volcanic eruptions. Uh, there's going to be signs in the sky. Uh, we talked the other night about the asteroid that they're that they're predicting will will come uh, real close to the Earth in, in in the next year or so. So all of these things. You remember the eclipse that went all the way across the United States here a couple of years back. All these things are signs in the heaven that point to the fact that we're in the last days. But they have to ha have to happen. Before the Lord comes, it doesn't say he'll come when they happen. It says they'll start happening before. So those are signs in the heavens. Okay, that's the timing. That's understanding the timing, the events that happen, and the Is timing. Is in that the next couple place. of days or very, you know, very close? 
that there is, um, the scientists have already said that there are a couple of the big asteroids that are coming very close to the Earth. Yeah, that's actually that's happening not the, the next Wormwood year. That's not the Wormwood one. Yeah, that, the but Wormwood was due a little later. 2029. Yeah, 20, it's, it's, it's coming later on in the cycle. So we don't know exactly where we are in things. We know that Daniel prophesied that there would be a peace treaty signed with Israel that allows them to build the temple and, and gives them peace, and it will be a false peace of security in the last seven years. And, well, you heard a lot in, in Trump's. In Trump's time, he's talked about this big peace treaty. May It may or may not be the treaty, but they've also talked about Trump helping them build the third temple. Which his son-in-law and his daughter are, well, she married in, but the son-in-law is Jewish, right? And he's been working, you know, hand in hand with, with the president, working with Israel. Yeah. So. so there's things going on in the background. There's things that are happening. So, and then when you go back to Matthew chapter 24, okay, when we when we look at this, Yeshua made the statement, or they asked him a question, and in Matthew chapter 24 verses 1 through 14. I'm going to read all 14 verses. It's the beginnings of this last day scenario that he talked about. Uh, they had come out of the temple because they'd been in the temple probably for the hour of prayer, for the time of prayer. And they pointed out to the Lord, they said, look how beautiful, marvelous all this is. The great columns and the marble and the pavilions and all these things. And the Lord looked around and said, I'll tell you, the day's going to come. There's going to be one stone laying on another, standing on another in this temple. It'll all be torn down flat. Okay. And so they came and they asked him three questions, really. When will these things happen? In other words, when will the temple be torn down? What will be the sign of your coming? And what will be the sign of the end of the age? So Matthew 24 is actually referring to three different events. The destruction of the temple, the second return of Christ, and the setting up of the kingdom, the end of this age and the setting up of the kingdom age. So that's all being answered there. Uh, but when it comes to frequency and, and intensity, you got to realize, so the Lord began to tell him this. He said, Watch out, and I'm reading from the, uh, okay, I'm going to keep reading from the ESV. It's probably a little easier for you to, to compare to what you're familiar with. The ESV, English Standard Version, verse 3 says, and as, or excuse me, verse 4 says, And Jesus answered them, saying, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. Now, you can look at that in two ways. There will be false prophets that claim to be Messiah. Right. But he also can mean there'll be a lot of people that will declare that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah, but they will be doing that to lead you astray. They will, you, that's why you have to be careful. Just because they're naming the name of Christ, that doesn't mean they're leading you into the truth. Right. That's a sign of the last days. Many will come in that, he said. And you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not alarmed. For all these things must take place. For the end, but the end is not. All these things have to begin, but the end is not yet. And so it begins to talk about the nature of the people. Uh, I, I'm going to go back now to the complete Jewish Bible because I like the way it reads in the latter part of this. It says, for people, verse 7, for people will fight against each other. Nations will fight against each other. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various parts of the world. Always happen. Always has been happening. All this is the beginning of the birth pains, the beginning of sorrows, it says in other versions. In other words, but it's the frequency and the intensity of the, this is where you go in, you have to watch for the frequency and intensity. And that, in different different places it, where it says various places, it may, also means different places. Maybe they've never had That's that never before. Had before. They've never had a destruction before. And all of a sudden, you know, the floods, well, Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge was just flooded mm -hmm. uh, this was all going on at the same time right. there were earthquakes uh cleveland tennessee chattanooga tennessee just had torn de destructive Tornado. tornadoes all of these things were happening almost uh and actually they were on um let's see was it last sunday night some of them were some of them were so uh, all these things together, and a lot yeah. of them were together. They're talking about the uh, eruption in Yellowstone. They're talking about an eruption somewhere out west, on, on, on west. They're talking about earthquakes up at the west coast. They're talking about the Ring of Fire that goes all the way around the Pacific Basin. All of these things are going on like they've never happened before. Used to, there was earthquakes, you know, 
dozens of them a year. Now there's tens of thousands of them a year. And so it's, it's really increasing, okay? Uh, but here's, here's one of the keys I want, I want to really kind of focus on for a few minutes. It says, that time that you will be, at that time you will be arrested and handed over to be punished and put to death. And all peoples will hate you because of me. At that time, many will be trapped in betraying and hating each other. People say, well, that's talking about the Jews. He's talking to his disciples who are hearing his message and following him and, and establishing his church and, and taking the gospel to all the world. He's talking to them. Many are going to hate you. They're going to, they're going to destroy you. He's talking about the message that they will carry. Okay. And how many have heard about the um, in different, not just in one state, but in uh, different states where they have come in and they've either fined the people that have come to church or they have arrested some of them and you can get a thousand some states you can get a thousand dollar ticket for showing up at church on they Sunday. came in literally and took their license plate numbers and of course there's they've uh, sued the churches have sued do i have a little bit of oh, hmm. well i have a couple of opinions on this okay if they are doing it in a responsible way, um, because one of them said there's all one of the governors or something said there's all ways, all kinds of ways to get the gospel out in a in a in a, in a, a way that will um, not be dangerous or whatever. So I'm I'm saying there are those ways, but to come in and shut down a church um and a lot of it was those that were uh staying in their cars and most of them even had their windows rolled up and they were on the fm radio thing you know right. where they could hear it like that the government remember what i said the enemy is going to try to see what he can get away with and so they're trying the government it's honey a lot of it is that is Going back to your mind control. Right. All right. And, and going on to the complete Jewish Bible, it says in verse 10, at that time, many will be trapped into betraying and hating each other. It's talking about people, believers will be, they'll be betraying and hating each other. Many false prophets will appear and fool men. You know, he's talking to the church here, folks, because uh, most of the world don't care what prophets say, false or real or otherwise okay he's talking to the he's talking to his disciples he's telling them what's going to happen to believers in those days many people's love will grow cold because of increased distance from torah now uh the king james and the other english persons say lawlessness that has nothing to do with really just breaking the laws of the land that's not what it's talking about it's the farther away we get from obeying the word. The law of God. The law of God. The Torah of God. The law of God. Obeying the scriptures. Remember, when this is being preached, there was no New Testament scriptures. He's speaking of the Torah. He says, and he said, in the last days, they're going to get so far separated from the from the Torah, the instructions, the directions of God, uh, and they'll get far, their hearts will get cold when they get farther and farther away from the, the word of God. Absolutely. All right. And many people's hearts will grow cold. They get distant from Torah. And whoever holds out till the end will be delivered. And this good news about the kingdom will be announced throughout the whole world as a witness. And then the end will come. Uh, so it talks about the hearts of the people. Now, it talked about there. It gave you a lot of the character of the people. What we are seeing in the hearts of people. Things we have never experienced in our lifetimes. Just basic goodness. Now, they, they laud it on, when, when they see it on TV, and, and we, we, we see these, we see these uh, people that step out and they do great things. Uh, and and they, they, you know, we need to pay attention that there are still people doing righteous and good things. They're feeding people. We got people in our county that are feeding people. These are good people that are feeding people, and other people are trying to tear them down, trying to say they're trying to bring attention to themselves. Uh, that's a lie of the devil. Uh, that that's people who don't don't really know and understand. Uh, just trying to feed people and make it make everybody else aware of where there's food at and 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 who to call or who they're looking for to do these things. Uh, I want to take you to Timothy and just read a few well, scriptures first of all, in let Timothy. Before you go too far, I, I'm still in that same theme. I'm not leaving okay. the theme. Well. 
just want to say now the government is telling some of the stores like i heard even walmart and target what is what not to sell some things and they actually have barriers um that will keep them from going to those things in the stores right and you know telling them what to sell now you go back to well you think that well when it says that we're not going to be able to buy or sell maybe it means for right now something a little bit different okay and these things are all set up for what's coming i'll, I'll close I'll, I'll get to that at the very end what i think about that second timothy chapter three verses one through five just five verses here but understand this that in the last days there will come times of difficulty Lord, help us. If this is not a time of difficulty, it's going to get worse. If this is not difficulty, then we must be looking for some worse things to come. Now, unfortunately, there are. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, and having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. We So we see in all of this that the hearts of the people are a very important ingredient to understanding the last days. Right. What are people like in this day? Uh, we've noticed times you you can you can tell the difference in a generation or two. If you go back, I mean, most of us in our family maybe have at least two or three generations back from us. Okay, as far as grandmothers or maybe great grandmothers, depending on how old you are. I mean, I don't have great grandmothers left, or uh, or even actually any grandmothers or uh, grandfathers alive uh, because I'm now in my sixties. Uh, but I, I lived in a time when there was five generations of our family in the Townsend Church of God here. So I've lived in, uh, seen different generations. And you can see how people think and, and, and how, what their respect is like, what goodness is like when you look at the difference in the generations. I remember when we lived in Millington, our parsonage in Millington, we lived right next door to the city judge. But his house was the very last house on the street or the first house on the street if you're coming off the main road his was the first ours was the second but when you went on down the road and you made the made the turn and went on down about a half a mile or so you run into the drug dealers okay you run into a lot of drug dealing and things of that nature down on just on the opposite street of where we live matter of fact some of our military members of our church were forbidden to be on our street they couldn't come to the pastor's house because the pastor's house was on a drug street i mean oh, our yeah. next our next door neighbor uh, one time, uh, her and her husband were on drugs, and I came back from a Church of God camp meeting and found her stand, sitting on my doorstep. And I knew her. I'd witnessed her and talked with her. I said, Linda, what's wrong with you? And she was just in tears. She said, I need you to help me. She said, my husband took all of our money and pray, paid off the drug dealers. Yeah, that's probably a, more of a common law marriage husband thing. But anyway, my husband took all of our money, paid off our, paid off our drug dealers, and then hung himself in our front yard. While we were gone. While we were gone. And she found him when she came home from work. And here's what she said. And I can't get anybody to help me or to talk to me. No pastors will talk to me. Nobody will help me. I need you to help me. And we did. We loved her and we took her in. God gloriously saved her and cleaned her up. She became a Sunday school teacher. Uh, she did a lot of a lot of good things. Had a little daughter left because they had a they had a daughter together and had her daughter and raised her daughter in the church and was teaching Sunday school and ended up actually in one of the big Baptist churches. When we left, she's in one of the big Baptist churches in our town, still teaching. And come to find out, she was a high uh, skyscraper construction worker back in the '80s and '90s. She built skyscrapers in New York City, walked the beams, uh, and, and helped build big skyscrapers. You never know what somebody's life has right. been like. Uh, but anyway, nobody would help her because nobody wanted to be bothered by her. But what I started to say was this. So they were there on the drug street. And so two men, I, could, I, I saw two men walking by the house. It was late one night. All of our lights are off. They couldn't see me standing in my door. And they were walking by an older man 
and a young man. And the young man had, had finished drinking a, a, off his beer or soda or what, but it was a can. And they walked by my house and he, say beer. Yeah, probably likely it's a beer. He threw the can into my yard. And the older man, and given both these guys were going down to the drug inn, they said, hey, that's the preacher man's yard. You don't do that. You don't throw that in the preacher man's yard. Go get that out of the preacher man's yard. Why? Because his generation had a respect. Exactly. Okay? They had a respect that had been drilled into him, even though he was on drugs, even though he was on alcohol, doing alcohol and drugs and things of that nature. He still had enough respect that he didn't want the younger generation throwing beer cans into the preacher's yard. Nowadays, they don't care. Nowadays, the younger no generation, has, they don't have a respect for that mm -hmm. unless they happen to have been raised in the church and it's been instilled in them. Maybe your generation, your kids, your grandkids still have some respect, but the world doesn't have that respect anymore. No. Okay? They don't, they, they, they've, since I've been here, they've thrown rocks through our sign and, and beer bottles through the sign, and they throw them out, they throw them out on the yard. I have to go gather them up out of the side of the road on a regular basis. Can I say this while you're with Ceylon? Sure. I'll catch a breath. One of the reasons might be you just think about it is because they've been so burnt by some of the pastors that are not te they're teaching that what we talked about the other day the half truths and the non truths which are all lies and so they lost respect right. well we lost when the church lost power they lost, yes the world recognizes the church don't have the power it once had if they're old enough to know they realize the church the church doesn't, you know, we have prayer meetings, and I'm thankful we have prayer meetings, okay? I, and I'm, I don't want to get on too much off on this, on, on a downer on the church, because I love the church. The church is what I was saved in the church. I'm not anti-church, but here's the deal, is that when we call a prayer meeting at the church, or when we call people to the altar at the end of the service, they didn't stay in the altar five minutes or ten minutes. You could, be, you could rest assured that when the preacher called an altar call, if he called an altar call at the end of the service, you're going to be there at least an hour. You miss maybe two. You miss Bonanza on Sunday night. Yeah, Sunday nights Bonanza came on at nine o'clock on Sunday nights. I can count on one, maybe two hands at the most. How many times in my life I saw Bonanza? You know, back before they had before it was replays were going on. You know, before that. So I never saw Bonanza because when they called an altar call on Sunday night, you didn't get home till ten. You know, you might see the last fifteen minutes on a good on a good night. We called it a good night when we got home early. Here's the thing: is that people have changed. Paul said in, in, in Thessalonians, I, I think it's in, in, in uh, uh, Second Thessalonians. Let me look right here. I had, I had it right here, and then uh, I've, I've kind of lost it. But he made the statement. It says people's hearts would grow cold. Yes, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. He talked about the great falling away, that the Lord will not come until first there's a great falling away. Now, I understand that people don't go to church like they used to. Okay? There are people who don't go to church like they used to. People don't uh, believe in God like they used to, especially the, the younger generation that's coming up. And there is a revival in the younger generation. I don't want to pay them all with that. But a lot of college age, 20s, 30s, they don't believe in God like they used to. Okay, uh, But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about such a falling away of the faith that it becomes visibly noticeable. Okay, In England, they will tell you in <laughs> England that your great cathedrals and churches were the revivals of the 1700s and 1800s and some of the greatest preachers of those ages preached are empty museums Amen, now. Amen, hope. They are empty, okay? And so there's been a great falling away in some areas, but when the scripture speaks of it, it's talking about a worldwide, there's going to be a great worldwide falling away uh, of, of from the faith. Uh, there will be remnants of people that will still believe and, and trust God. There will be nations that still viably trust God. And I pray that America continues to be one of those nations, but we can't get away from the prophecies that there has to come a great falling away. So people's hearts are also what you have to watch. All you got to do is watch, you, watch your TV. Now, I know there's people that tell you to not watch the news, and I realize how, how dangerous it can be to watch too much news uh, we we have we watch news because we keep up with prophetic events, but we have to be careful because sometimes 
we also have to turn off the news going, man, that's getting to me. Just turn it off. You know, they'll repeat this same cycle three or four times a night. We can hear it later, but it can't be in our heads all day long. We got to get, we got to get some of it out and get some more word into us. But here's the deal it, it, it is this, that you can see on what they report or how they report or the whole attitude they report in. You can see Washington, D.C. You can see the infighting from those who want to lead us that the hearts of men are really not following the heart of God. They have an agenda. They have an agenda. They have an agenda. And, 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 our, and, our, and our ministers, the great body of the ministers, are, are stopped preaching the truth. And they're wanting to try to say things like there, there's not, we, we know there's only one way to the Father. They're wanting to say now to encompass all these other faces and say, oh, they're all trying to get to the same God we are. And so these are signs that people are falling away from the faith. But we haven't seen the fullness of that sign yet. That means there's going to come a time that's going to become really visibly noticed to everyone that in the midst of while some are having a great revival, there's also a flip side of this coin that there's a great falling away. Right. So don't give up on the revival. The revival is, is taking place. But also be aware of there's supposed to be a falling away. So when you see the falling away, don't get discouraged. Know that there also should be a revival on the other side of that coin, okay? You got something else there before I, I do. close? I want because the way what you were saying um, about the gut, you know, just saying, um, are we playing right into their plan? This is a thing that I've found um, a couple of days ago, and there, there it starts out by saying that the one that kind of ran against Trump, we'll just we'll just say it like that. She made her college thesis. On this person's writings and his name is Saul Alinsky and it says and the title of it is are we of this paper are we playing right into their plans and here's what his title was how to create a social state there are eight levels of control that must be obtained before you are able to create a social state the first one is very important you ready health care control health care and you can control the people poverty increase the poverty level as high as possible poor people are easier to control and will not fight back if, if, you, if are. you I got it if you are providing everything for them to live hmm. debt increase the debt to an unsustainable level that way you are able to increase taxes and this will produce more poverty gun control garland remove the ability to defend theirself if you go back to what i was talking about with hitler and, and some of the other things that was that happened with along those lines one of the first things they did was take away their weapons because the, the right to bear arms wasn't so that we could fight evil people. It was to keep the government from taking control of our lives protect ourselves. that we could resist. It, that's what it says. Remove the ability to defend themselves from the government. That way you are able to create a police state. Welfare. Now let me say this before I talk about this. There are some, and especially, you know, some... Um, some that are single and they have kids and they're doing the best that they know how. And then Ashley, Ashley has, you know, she has SSI. We're not, not against that. So I, that's not what I'm saying. No. But when you get so mind controlled into it that you think you can't do anything else and you just sit there and, you know. Well, they, they've created a system. You can work and you don't. Yeah, we worked in the prisons. We were in seven prisons when we were in Millington and three halfway houses and seven prisons. One of our most difficult things, uh, especially for the women who would get out of prison, was to try to get them into the work, teach them. We'd, we'd try to teach them computer skills, secretary skills, whatever kind of skills they wanted. We tried to uh, make an effective way to teach them some way to get a job. But the problem was the government would give them way more money and, and support then we could possibly get them with an entry level job. Right. And so they said, forget this because I can get more money on welfare 
but the welfare creates a dependency. Right. Whereas a, a, yeah, a job a fine line creates an independence and, and it gives you a little bit of sense of pride mm -hmm. and independence and, and self worth. Right. You know, and you don't depend on the government. And you don't and you don't you know it's a whole vicious cycle. Number six, education. Take control of what people read and listen to. Take control of what children learn in school. Mm. And one of the main things the enemy did was get prayer out of school. Get prayer out of school. And get God out of school. Religion. Yeah. Remove the belief in the God and in the God from the government and schools, which is what I just said. Number eight, class warfare. Divide the people into the wealthy and the poor. This will cause more discontent. And it will be easier to take tax the wealthy with the support of the poor. Does any of this sound familiar? Some, yeah, there, there's on. One, one of your socialist uh, candidates, he's, he's stepped out of the race now, but he wanted to tax the wealthy up to 90%. He wanted 90% of their wealth. And, you know, and when, when you died, he wanted what was left when you died. And you didn't need to leave anything to your children because the government would take care of your children. These are things that are happening right now, right in our own country right. and we have to become aware right. I'm not saying that you know it's everybody right. I'm not saying no. that it's not all of because there should be some Christian people that are getting into the government right. there should be some and there's some good people that in there. are standing up and there are some and I'm gonna just say if for one thing I'll just say it if the president that we have right now was not here right now as president it would be a lot worse yeah it was, because we were already told you know if you were paying attention like I said, if you don't pay attention to politics and to the news you don't really know any of these things but trump's opponent in 2016 made the statement that the church was going to have to give up a lot of their ingrained uh strong beliefs and get in line with the state i remember the exact wording but basically uh she said the government's going to have to give up i mean the church is going to have to give up it's dogmatic, strong beliefs, and, and basically get in line to accept the agenda they wanted to state, they wanted to, to force on us uh, their agenda. So we're facing, we're in those times. So we're going to see these things coming. I, you know, you know, uh, these things must come to pass. Now we are Some not, we are, we are not doom is. and gloom prophets by any means. But if you're not aware of the tactics of the enemy. How are you going to defend yourself or fight off these things? If you are caught by surprise, if you are blindsided by something, then how in the world are you going to be ready when the enemy hits? I'll, I'll use what's happened, uh, and, and I'm 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 not going to I'm not going to brag about this, but I'm saying if you if you listen to us over the last two or three years, if you really listen to us, and some of you did, if you listened to us and paid attention to what we said. You wasn't in Walmart fighting over toilet paper. You weren't in the local grocery store trying to grab some food because your pantries were empty. You had a stock, you had a stock room, you had a storehouse in your house. You had put stuff back. If you listened to what we said, because we kept, we've been telling this for the last two or three or four or five years, or more, actually a little more than five years now, that you needed to have food and water. You it's needed sweet. to get you some seed. And, heirloom. And, yeah, heirloom seed. You need to be ready for difficult times because biblically difficult times were coming. Just, so we're not, we're not, we, don't, we don't tell you all this to go, oh, I don't know what we're going to do. We're telling you this so that you won't be blindsided because so when this happens the next time, if, if you, if this happens again, no, when this happens again, and it will, eventually, I'm not saying in the next two weeks or next two months or even the next two years, but at some point in our lifetime, this is going to happen. This things like this are going to happen again. May not be the exact circumstances, but things are going to begin to happen. They're going to uh, to escalate as we grow closer to the coming of the Lord. You shouldn't be caught off guard the next time. Right. What is that old saying? This is not the Bible. Uh, Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Right, caught off guard once, shame on the people that caused this. But if I'm caught off guard twice, shame on me for not getting myself ready after the first time around. So there has to be a practical aspect because prophetically, when you look around, and we've we've been looking around for years and putting these things together, 
realizing the times we were in, and we were warning our people. And the last message I preached at Townsend Church of God was, don't forget what we've been teaching you for the last four or five years. Be ready because difficult times are coming. Now, at the same time, and i got to close out because I'm, I'm a little four minutes over my hour here. At the same time that all these difficult things are coming, the same prophecies in the book of Acts, and we'll get into those on, on some of the services, it says, but at the same time, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. My sons and my daughters are going to prophesy. Glory. Old men will dream dreams and young men will see visions. Upon my servants, on my handmaids, I'll pour out my spirit, says the Lord. And this will be that which is promised by the prophet Joel. You'll see it begin to take place even the more so. So what does that mean? Exponentially toward the end, if, if the signs of the times begin to uh, increase exponentially and begin to uh, increase in frequency and intensity, Come you on. can be guaranteed that there's going to be an increase in the frequency and the intensity of the outpouring of the Spirit of God on whosoever will receive it. There will be power and signs and wonders that, that will be come back to the church. That's where the power is coming back in. That's why we've studied for years also what's robbed the church of its power and get us back to the power the church yes. is supposed to have because there's going to be demonstrations of the power of God in the midst of all this that's going on. And all will see how great is our God. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you one of the promises that was given to us and the Lord promised this and he does not go back on his promises. Absolutely. He told in a prophetic word, he told Ashley, he said, you will not leave this earth before you see wholeness. And I believe that with all of my heart and I'll stand on it with yeah. all of my heart. So I'm just saying people are going to see how great is our God. Lord said you are going to be a servant of the last day's house and you will have a voice in it. So we are still looking for great signs, wonders and miracles. That doesn't make us believe. Hello, blessed are those who you've never seen. You've never seen one and you believed in God. Great. But that doesn't mean, but signs follow believe. When, when faith begins to rise up in the church. Come on. And I think we're seeing faith rise up in the church. People are having to get down to business with God right Amen. now. And faith is going to start rising in the church. And the word says, these signs shall follow those who believe, who have faith, who trust in God. And so we're going to begin to see more signs manifest in the church. Not so we can believe more, but because we believe more. These signs will follow the fact that we rise up in faith. We shall believe. Amen. And God will respond to the faith that's rising up in the church. So don't get in despair. We want to have two sides of this coin, but we don't want you caught off guard again. Again, I don't want you to see you anymore. I, I don't want I don't want to run into you uh, in, in despair in the dollar store because you don't have no toilet paper in your house and the shelves are empty. <laughs> or trying to buy food and there's nothing there. You know, or, 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 or there's nothing in your house to cook. You, bet, you, you better have a supply. Don't get caught off guard again. Be able to read the signs. And if this is the beginning of signs, know that there's other things going to happen later on. But, but he said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have trouble. There's going to be difficulty. But be of good cheer. Because I've already come to the world. Again, and because you believe in me, you are overcomers also. Hallelujah. We are overcomers. If we believe the Lord and follow him, we are overcomers more than conquerors. Amen. And, and never, don't you ever, let me see if I can get it in there. There you don't go. Don't you ever. Never give, give up. up. Never give up. No giving up place. Hallelujah. For the no people giving of up. God. Father, we love you and we praise you for your goodness and your mercy. You have blessed us. And you have encouraged us and you have strengthened us. Even in the midst of this turmoil, you have been with us. We've seen your hand at work. We've seen you stirring the church, shaking the church, renewing the church. And for all of those who have an ear, if they will listen, the Spirit is speaking yes. to his people in this time that we are in. So, Father God, make us aware. Make us aware. Make us aware like we've never been aware Amen. of your voice in this day and time. Amen. And then don't let us just hear the voice and say hallelujah, but let us do what the Spirit of God is saying. Let us do what the Word declares. Let us be doers of the Word and not just hearers only. Amen. 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 All right, as we sign off, I'll remind you of this. We appreciate the like. We're, we're learning some things. The likes and the comments are important. Uh, do something to respond because face, the Facebook algorithm expands the reach of our broadcast by the response that people give. So what we, we appreciate it if you watch it, 
great. We want you to watch it, but it helps us a little bit if you just hit the like button or a heart or something. Good or job, Gene. Eugene, make a comment, say I'm here, say yes, say hello, whatever you want to do. Like. The computer don't care what you say. It just it just notes uh, that you logged in and we you connected, you, you responded to it. So it increases the audience as this thing grows. Also, for those of you that got on late, I'll say this. We now have a YouTube channel for Destiny's Gate, and all these videos are from now on going to be uploaded onto YouTube. So if you've got friends or family that doesn't do Facebook Live, but they want to hear what we're teaching or what we're saying, uh, I now have created a, a Facebook, or a YouTube channel. It's Destiny's Gate, apostrophe S, but Destiny's Gate. Search that, put that in your search engine on your YouTube. It'll pull up the little, uh, Angie, show the, pull the cup up here. The, the little logo for Destiny's Gate will be up there in the corner. See the little gate that our son-in-law drew for us? Uh, it'll say I'm Destiny's Gate. This. There you go. That that Not not the sparkly part, but it'll be the, <laughs> the, the gate logo will be there. And it's Destiny's Gate. There's only one video on it now. That was Saturday service. Uh, that was already uploaded to, as a test. So subscribe to it. It'll let you know as I upload these videos. If you've watched it live, you'll already have seen it. But the day will come. The day will come that we'll load up some teaching directly to YouTube as, as we go along with this. So make sure you go in there and subscribe to it uh, so it alerts you when I load something up. So some of your friends who don't want to watch Facebook, who don't like Facebook, okay, but they want to watch they watch videos on YouTube, they can now watch these on YouTube. So by tomorrow, this service will be loaded up. Maybe later on tonight, it'll be loaded up onto the YouTube channel. We love you guys so much. Love you and appreciate you. Thank Amen. You. This is Destiny's Gate signing off. We love y'all. Uh, Friday night, 7 o'clock for the Nets prophecy update, prophetic update from the gate. And then, of course, we, we, we a little over again. We're working on it. A little over again. Well, we try to keep these to around an hour, but on Saturday for our Shabbat services from 11 o'clock till 1. We do about a two-hour service, give or take. A little time either way so we we go a little bit longer there for those who really want to stick Aww. around for some more in-depth teaching oh the love so, i feel the love god bless you all even if you watch this on replay please say please put something up again it helps us to expand our reach amen love y'all